Hi everyone. So one of the most popular articles on my website that's actually quite old now was how to use a UI picker control as a data source, a selector for another object. So what happened in the tutorial was you would pick something from the picker control and it would then take that and it would put it, in the case of the tutorial, it put it as the input for a text field. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and make a, an updated version of that and a quick video here for you. So what we're going to use, do is use a UI picker control and we're going to change a, the value of a label as you select the different things on the picker. So obviously, you know, this is a much updated version. We're now using Swift 5 uh, with Xcode 10 and let's go ahead and get started. So what I've got here at the moment is I've just created a single view application. There's nothing in it. Okay. And I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put on the library. We're going to put our picker view. So I'm just going to drag a picker view in here and we're not going to do any fancy layout or anything like that. So I've got a picker view and the other thing I'm going to want is a label. Okay. So we're just going to put this label here and what we'll do is we'll just change the formatting just a little bit just to make sure that everything fits. We're not going to use any fancy constraints or anything like that. That's not the point of this video. So with those in place, right, let's go ahead and let's just center the text label here. So we're going to go in and we're going to say, make that label there centered. All right. So let's just get rid of that. We're not going to need that panel anymore. So the next thing we need to do is obviously we need to reference these two controls. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to control click and drag here and I'm going to create a reference and I'm just going to call this one my picker for the picker and then I'm going to do another one for the label and I'm just going to say my label very simple very straightforward okay let's just clean up the source code there a little bit okay so now we've got those right. next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and put some data in our picker all right so I'm going to put snippet in here that I've got it's just an array of string literals. Um, in fact, actually, that's that's old code. Let me zoom out of that. There we go. So I've just got my picker data, right? Now, to get the data into that controller, there's a couple of things we need to do. So first of all, obviously, we need to, you know, have a way to control that what goes on here with this picker. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to add in here, and I'm going to say that this file is not only the UI picker data source, but it's also the UI picker uh, view delegate right so we're going to have it so that this file here this view controller acts as the delegate and controls the data source now when I add those of course we've not satisfied the requirements to act as the source for these two things and what you're going to see is when you click on here it's going to say that it's going to say hey you're not conforming to the protocol you want to fix it well this is one of the nice things about Xcode is I can just say yep and it's going to add, it's going to put in the stub for me for the things that I need to put in. Now, I don't want that code up there, so I'm just going to hold down the option and command key. I've got the code selected and now I'm using the square brackets and I'm just going to move that code down here because I don't like to have that at the top. I like to have the default code at the top. Right. So, let's look at these. So, number of components. This is the number of sections, right? So, if you think if you look at this list here with like Cupertino, Sunny Val, that's one part of the that's one component okay we're only going to be using one so I'm actually just going to say return one so it's just saying all the time there's just one part here okay now number of rows in the component so we need to tell it how many rows to build well we can do that now because we've got this my picker data up here so I can just say return my picker data count so however many items there are in here in this case there's four or five there's six so in this case, it's going to return six rows. Okay, so anytime the data changes, this number is going to change as well. Important thing here, if I now run this, I want you to notice that it's still not going to do anything. Right, there's, there's no labels here. Uh, sorry, there's no values here because we've not actually ho completed hooking it up yet. We've just really powered up the delegation is what we've got here. So in the view did load what i now need to do is i now need to specify and say that hey you know my picker use this file this view controller as the delegate okay we, we set it up here and we said look i'm gonna be the delegate but we never actually told the picker that so now we're just going to say my picker data sorry my picker 
dot del delegate equals self equals this okay uh, as in the view controller so if I now run it again we're going to be getting a little closer oops I got an error there oh I'm an idiot Where's, there we go equals self see we all make mistakes so now when I run it what you're going to see is look I've got these six rows of data but it's something's wrong right I've, I'm not seeing the data that I expected but I do have my six rows so that's okay we know what's going on here right what we haven't done is assigned the data here to be these values and so what we need to do here is we need to add another one right and we're going to say so picker and the one we're looking for is title for row we're going to set the title of each of those rows okay and, and all I'm gonna do is I can say hey when you're building this just return my picker data and all we need is the current row okay so let's try that and see what happens there we go that's more like it so now we're seeing the data being returned and put in as the label for each of these rows so this is all now working correctly but what we need to now do is have this label change so let's go ahead and do the final part all right so what do we need to do here well let's think about this logically right when the value here is selected or changed in some way we want this label to update well conveniently there's another function we can use here from the ui picker control and what we can do is we can say on the picker view And the one we're looking for is did select row. Okay, so what that means is this is going to get called every time I select something on this list. So in essence, when this value changes. And when that happens, what I want to do is I just want the label, which we already know is my label. And I want the text to equal the data source row, just like we did with up above. Okay. Now, the reason we can do this is because it's going to pass into this function the selected row. So because of that, we can pull out the relevant piece of data from the index up here. So let's go ahead and run this. All right. So, you know, again, it hasn't changed yet. So the value is, is basically the default. But as soon as I change it to something and let go, let's say pull, look at that. Now it's changing, right? So that is all you need to do, okay? This is the, you know, sort of a very simple example, but that is all you need to do to have something selected in a picker view and then put that somewhere else in your application. And those are all the steps. And along the way, you've learned how to set up a picker view control and have, you know, this file acting as the delegate and setting up the data source. So that's some bonus material for you there. So I hope this has been useful. Uh, you know, go to peterwidham.com and look at some other articles there or other you know videos that i've got on the channel here and i will speak to you next time see ya